Hey, what is up guys? So I got two interesting decks gonna be going off. I just caught the glimpse of the last duel that they had and oh my gosh, these two decks are so cool. So, uh, one of our players in the red, he's actually playing out like an obelisk deck, but it's got like a lot of other tech cards in it. Um, of course, Fire and Ice Hand is so good. This guy over here in the blue, uh, six Madara Uchiha. Six over here. Actually, no, it's it's six Modara, six Uchiha, six. So uh, he's in the blue. He's at 846. And both these players have been playing for a while. Um, and another guy has 3,552. What is it? Uh, the rating points, whatever it is. Uh, the, the the ratings or the ladder just got reset, guys. So um, that definitely does uh, take into consideration that you know these guys are probably still high rating players. But these are really cool decks. I've been seeing enough of the hat tricks and the light swarms, and you know, I've been waiting to see some good players or just you know, decently rated players play some obscure things that we have not seen. The blue player is playing something on next level. I don't really want to ruin it for you guys, uh, although it'll probably be in the title anyways. But uh, he's playing this deck that revolves around level one monsters, and he's pulling out some pretty crazy stuff that I have never even seen uh, see any play. So Double Magical Merchant is pretty good. So he's going to be able to make some just uh, crazy XYZ monsters that you probably have never even heard of. Heck, I didn't even know some of these cards existed. Plus he's also playing Relinquish. Now, this is just, it's too cool. Oh, and he's going to go ahead and Normal Summon Chaos Necromancer. And this card gains a uh, 300 attack for each uh, monster in uh, your graveyard. So that's pretty good. So 2100, not bad at all. Although the Fire Hand will probably just pop, but I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't attack into fire because you're not only going to lose that, but you've got back row there that can, uh, you know, uh, be hit with ice hand because when you play against fire and ice hand, at least the thing I like to do is either try to make black shovel corn to send to the graveyard that way it's not destroyed, or what you can do, yeah, okay, of course he wasn't going to attack into it, okay. Or what you can do is you can uh, big eye and, uh, you know, you can take the uh, stuff. Or what you can do is just make it so, um, you know, you can have a monster that you don't mind dying. Just get establish a board uh, where they can't pop either a monster or they can't pop the back row. And that's just going to hurt them. You can see there's already three monsters out. So a play of the red might be able to distribute three for Obelisk. And that's still a decent play. Although Hardened Arm Dragon Obelisk is definitely what is required. Because there's so many things that just destroy. And he's going to go ahead and tribute two. Three cards, Obelisk, oh my gosh, we got a god card up in here. And Obelisk is legitimately probably the best god card in the uh, game that I actually sees any play. No one really plays uh, Winged Dragon of Raw or Slifer, they're just, they go all in too much. And Obelisk, uh, you know, obviously with Soul Charge, it's, it's a really good card. Oh, there's Soul Charge from a player in the blue, and he's going to go off, guys. Watch what he'll make, he'll make some crazy stuff. And uh, he's going to go ahead and pay 3,000, oh, 4,000, he's going for that big play right now let's go ahead and see what he actually busts out because like i said i mean he brings out stuff that you would just not even expect in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. So he's gonna go ahead and actually uh go for two uh level or rank ones i should say uh monster he's gonna go oh he's got embodiment of punishment and embodiment of crime the cane and able combo is now locked down so that's pretty awesome no, <laughs> i didn't even see this in game one this is so cool oh my gosh uh the player in the blue actually won game one because the other player actually did not understand that um there is uh the effect of relinquished uh, i'll go ahead and scroll up right here well he just kind of copy pasted the effect he has obelisk attacked into a relinquished and he'd kind of done goofed and i don't blame him because uh, you know i didn't know about that effect when i saw someone play relinquished oh man this is so long ago but i didn't know that you'd also take the battle damage uh if um i was attacking into it i just I mean, that, that, have you read that text on Relinquish? It is so tiny, you need a magnifying glass to actually see that effect. But anyways, he's going to basically uh, make it so he has to attack, and then he's going to go ahead and take all the battle damage. If you guys don't know what these cards do, I'll briefly go over them. They have, basically, to actually utilize their effects, you're going to have to have um, number 31 and also number 13, so you need both of them. But anyways, um, they cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects while they have material, and your opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from attacks on this card, and this card over here makes it so, um, it's essentially the same effect, but, uh, anyways, this card has the effect that you can detach one material from this card, change all of your, uh, mo opponent's monsters to fix up attack vision, also, all monsters your opponent controls must attack this card this turn. If able, obviously, there's some cards that might not be able to attack into the game. So, uh, the player in the red is reading, because Oh my gosh, I can't believe he actually pulled this off. Like, 
this is actually a build in his deck. I, I didn't really expect that at all. But there's um, also the same effect. They basically have the same effects, but you need both of them in order to be able to have that good effect where it can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects as long as it has, it has material. So basically, two turns, actually no, four turns technically. I don't know if you want to look at it like that because obviously then the other one wouldn't have material. Then that could cause problems. Why is he going for this? This is very interesting. Uh... Because now Obelisk can't attack because um, the Malefic has that condition where um, other monsters you control cannot declare- Oh, he's gonna go ahead and- Oh my gosh. <laughs> no way! <laughs> this is awesome, we're going to game three. Unless we see something crazy happen, because he's gonna go ahead and flick 2,000 points of damage, and he's already activated this card's effect, so- um, oh, he's gonna go ahead and act. Oh, that's that's gonna move to attack position, and it's going to have to attack. Now he will still take that three thousand points of damage because you know your opponent takes all the battle damage. Um, because it's not like this card has an effect where it can't attack during this turn, which is actually gonna <laughs> hurt him technically. But that is so cool. Oh my gosh, I did not expect to see him have Malefic Cyber and. Uh, he says great move. That was a great move. I, I did not expect to see that actually come out into the game. And, uh, interesting to see a closed forest. Um, I don't know if he's playing field spells. Um, maybe perhaps it's just there so um, field spells can't be activated. Um, I mean, now there's two field spells. Like, usually Malefics, they would kind of get hurt by that. But uh, player in the red says thank you. And I'm actually kind of confused. Why would he say thank you? What, what is the player in the blue plan right now? Because... Okay, what the heck is this? Number 63, Shimoji Shul uh, Soldier. <laughs> okay, so you can only use effective him once per turn. You dash one material from this card and after one of effects. Each player gains a thousand life points at the start of your opponent's next time I face each player. And he's gonna go ahead and gain and call a game. Well, let's go ahead and just continue on with this. I mean, the duel is only like six, oh, it's actually six minutes and 50 seconds off, but man, that was so cool. I mean, we I always thought the player in the blue had that game. He's, he's got, had Kane and Abel already ready to go, and the player in the red was like, you know what? I got that new soft backs in the extra deck. I did not expect that, and this is what I love about seeing decks that uh, normally people don't play. You see things that you normally wouldn't even think of uh, putting in the extra deck, because I would assume there's a lot of room in the uh, Malefic, but I didn't even know he was playing Malefic. <laughs> I didn't get to see them game one at all, because... Um, yeah, it was just it was just too much cards uh, were just I kind of joined the game a little bit late too, but uh, Black Illusion, which we love with Relinquish, is he can steal face down. There's a lot of cards where it's like you gotta target face up, like one on one has to target face up and attack position. Relinquish is just like nah, bro, I'm gonna take everything. Um, hopefully, um, he'll be able to find out. Oh, okay, uh, if it's a fire or ice hand. Uh, that definitely would be good because now he knows um, that you know he doesn't have to worry about that. Now it's interesting that he's summoning an attack position. Perhaps he just wants to you know have the opponent also take the damage. That could be a thing that he's uh, thinking about, uh, allowing it to go through. I almost mm, would keep in defense position because what if there's like a fire hand? Because then fire hand would then uh, attack him with this, then both take the damage, and then fire hand is still there. Um, I don't know. Maybe the player in the the red. Is a fr oh no, we got Medion over here. That's an interesting choice for a card. So he's gonna go ahead and activate its effect. And what I love with Medion, Medion can't be destroyed by card effects. Um, I remember before someone was, uh, this was like back when um, Dino Rabbit was like a really threat, uh, threatening deck for like almost everyone uh, played against that deck or have, has played that deck since Rabbit got that reprint uh, a long time ago. But uh, this card has the effect, I, I'm not sure if some of you guys know about this, but uh, whereas this card, not, card cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects. So that's a really good effect also. I mean, you can get deep risen, but that's really about it. But um, he does take 600 points of damage. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, return all other monsters on the field to the hand and inflict 300 damage to uh, your opponent for each card returned, which is a fantastic effect. Unfortunately, he still loses his Marshmallow. So that card is actually going to go ahead and go back, and then it is uh, Shuffle. Okay, so we can go ahead and set another card. It's interesting to see what the heck the player in the red is playing, because... I mean, I'm just seeing so many cards I have not even thought about playing in a... I think it's a Malefic Obelisk deck, or... Um, I want to see if he's playing a Hardened Armed Dragon, because... That card's really good, but against that other person's deck, where he can just make it so you have to attack, and you're going to take a bunch of damage. What the heck is this? Mad Reloader. Oh, okay, i got to read this card. This card is from a balance sent to the graveyard. You send two cards from a hand to the graveyard, and if you do draw two cards, it's not too bad of an effect. You can dump the stuff you don't need. And then what was that other, like, zombie-looking guy? I know a king, White Mare. Oh, it just, oh. So he's probably actually playing 
Skull Servants. Oh my gosh, this, this duel just gets keeps on getting cooler and cooler. So he's gonna blast out number 54, Lionheart. And I gotta read this card's effect because it's been a while. So I can't be sure my battle. And we take battle damage involving this card and inflict damage to your opponent equal to the amount of battle damage you took. Okay. Um, this card battles uh, the opponent's monster during damage calculator during either player's turn. You can detach one material from this card. Your opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from this battle. Oh, okay. That's a really good effect. Oh, my like, soul exchange is activated. Are we going to see a tribute three for... Oh, what the heck, dude? Oh, my gosh. I love this. Moisture creatures. Is this an archetype? By tributing three monsters on the field, destroy all spell and trap cards on your opponent's side of the field. That's not bad. Um, oh, Magical Merchant, that card is probably going to come in clutch right here and it's going to just make something crazy. I don't know if I tribute three monsters. I mean, it's got a decent effect, but it doesn't have an, another effect to sustain itself versus some of other meta decks. Like, there's no stun aspect to it. Um, wow, that's... It's just, oh, now, you see what I mean? Like, it's just, you're tributing three cards and you got rid of an Ice Hand, which could have potentially been used to, you know, do things. Unless, he, of course, he has Effect Veiler. Um, it is a fairy though, but I just don't see. Is it a level 10? Maybe that's the goal of his deck is to bring out like a rank 10, so it's 4, 5, 6. And unless a 9. Unless Asian Eyes' eyes are so damaged from playing too much video games. 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, that, that's, that should be 9. Um, but now Chaos Necromancer is summoned, and it's got 2700 attack. And I really wish also gain is it equal attack, or is it half? I forgot. Um, Equal, okay, so that's gonna be another 28 directly. So that's gonna be pretty close to game over here. If not game. Oh, okay. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty close. Next turn, next turn, it will be game. Oh, and he's gonna go ahead and what is he gonna make? Slacker Magician? Or Shiny, is it Shiny or Slack? I think it's Slacker. Shiny was its older name. It was like the OCG name. Number 63, Samoji Shoulder. <laughs> okay, um. In fact, one. So at the start of your, hmm, I don't know if that's so good. I mean, you you were right about to win. Why go for that? Like that's that's like a neutral effect. Hmm. I mean, is there, is there more fairies in here? I'm running. I'm wondering if you can like run Christia. No, I think everything is like fiend. There's insects. There's fiends. There's zombies. I, don't know, I think it's too obscure. <laughs> and besides, this this card is for the other player, anyways. But um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, this guy's got 2,000 defense and it can heal up. I almost feel like Slacker Magician is just a, a much better card overall if you need to be on the defensive side. I don't know. Maybe he just wants to get that one extra draw because you can make something to perhaps burn him. I don't know what other uh, rank ones uh, people play, but this is too cool. I want to see how this ends up. And uh, also, just as a heads up, Relinquish can't absorb more than one monster. Uh, oh, there's another Soul Charge activated. Soul Charge is just, it's too insane of a card and it helps you make these crazy things. But I like it in these types of decks where it's just... You bust out things that normally just don't see any play. So he's going to go ahead and bust out two Chaos Necromancers. Now they won't be able to attack during this turn. Um, is he going to make... What the heck is he going to make? Oh, maybe he's going for something else. So when this card is normal seven, you can have all face up monsters you control gain in one level. Also, they become dark. Okay. I wonder if the, them being dark has anything... Okay, so he's going to overlay for uh, three level two monsters because they all gained one level each from that... Uh, other card. Oh, if I could even mouse over. Dark Mist. Interesting choice. Okay, so he's gonna go. He's gonna activate effect one. So at the start of your opponent's next hand, like, why? Why Dark Mist though? Like I think the player in the blue's goal is just to try to make it so your opponent takes all the battle damage. Why is there no Magic Cylinder up in here? Magic Cylinder would be a fantastic card. Let's go to open up Watcher Chat because this is too too fun. This game is going to give me AIDS. Oh, we already know this is too good. Uh, a Pokwalif Killer. Um, yes, this card. This card could get over it. Um, no, well, actually, um, halves the attack and then it gains. Um, it's it would be unaffected by this card. I this this won't kill it, and it's unaffected by like everything. What what are you talking about? How how can this how can this kill it? No, Soul Charge. Soul Charge is. Is getting banned, guys. Stop complaining. <laughs> oh, why, why? This has nothing to do with last one. Okay, chat, you've already ruined your poster. <laughs> it's just effect number one. So he's just gonna go ahead and defense up, I think. Um, 
And this card doesn't really have a ut I Actually, I think there's another card. Oh, he's gonna go ahead and rank up. What the heck is he gonna bring out? Man, there's just so many obscure cards you normally don't see you play. Number C96, Dark Storm. So, it's got... If, if it has Dark Mist, it gains the uh, effect that uh, once per battle during either player's turn when an attack is declared involving this card and your opponent's monster, you can detach one material from this card, the attack of that opponent's monster becomes zero, and if it does, this card gains attack equal to the original. Oh, that's a pretty good effect. Um, so I guess he'll, he'll finally start to run over everything. He probably could have made it gain um, last turn. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, what the face down is, it could be another hand. Oh, it is an ice hand. That's going to go ahead and actually pop the back row. But remember, guys, um, he's, he can just go ahead and activate Relinquish's effect and absorb the fire here, which I assume that he would do. Oh, and he's got no more. Okay, that kind of sucks. That's one thing that sucks with the hands if you draw too many of them. It's like Tengu. It's like, oh, you draw too many. Uh, well, a Pot of Avarice used to be a thing. Now it's Pot of Economy, which is not necessarily... It's not even close. Pot of Avarice is so much better, in my opinion, at least. Um, but he's got so many cards. A Dark Hole would be fantastic. That's what he really needs to come back into this game, because the other guy's got way too much stuff on board, and Dark Hole would be what would save him. If he can harder the cards... Well, he's drawn, like, more, almost half of his deck, so... Hopefully he can pull off a Dark Hole, because otherwise not looking too good for him. Let's go down and go for these. Low-rated players wouldn't think of these. Yeah, this is not this is not a uh, low-rated duel. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give him a heart. All right, but um, player in the red probably thinking about his move. Um, he's he's got to make a move right now, otherwise he's probably going to lose. If he had Dark Hole, he probably would have activated it. So at this point, I would be safe to say that he probably doesn't have Dark Hole. He's probably going to try to think of a combo. Um, I'm trying to think of what he could potentially do in his deck because he has to know that this card is just going to wreck him regardless of what he summons unless he can, if he can throw out a skill drain because, you know, uh, I saw the Malefic there and I would think that if you're playing a Malefic deck, the chances of skill drain in that deck are relatively high. So that would be a pretty self-explanatory play though, so he'd probably throw that out immediately. So he probably doesn't have that either. He's really trying to think of what he can do. Um, hopefully he can actually, uh... I want to see a comeback here, because that, that was so cool that we saw the Gustav Max, like, I didn't expect him to have another level 10 monster, and just BAM, I was able to go for that. Um, okay, GG, oh, no, he, he's not GGing out, he's not out, he's got Mausoleum of the Emperor, um, and he's going to go ahead and sell in that Malefic Cyber and Dragon. Now, remember guys, both players are going to take the damage, and uh, he, can't, he can't afford to take the damage. He can attack the Chaos Necromancer, which is... Oh, I, can't, I can't see what's in the graveyard. Um, how many how many spells are in there? Um, probably GG. Um, I mean, you can only control one. Yeah. Oh, he's just going to attack into that. And then at that point, uh, he can just activate uh, this card's effect and attack him. And then uh, it's game over for him. Unless, of course, he's got back row. Uh, maybe. Like a fiendish chain would be nice. Or actually, a skill drain would be fantastic because he would attack him. He'd pay a thousand, and then he'd take three thousand, um, and then he'd actually be pretty decent off. Like no joke, he would he would probably come back from this, um, unless of course he gets an STA or something like that. But let's see if the player in the blue can. Uh, oh, he goes ahead and leaves the goal. I mean, he didn't have an option. He was probably trying to think of what he can do, and uh, he maybe he had soul charge, but soul charge. I mean, he couldn't. He couldn't do anything, I, I think, because there was just too many things that he would have taken the damage anyways. And next turn, apparently, he was going to... Oh, uh, he's just going crazy right now. But that was so cool that we saw the cane and Abel, or the embodiment of pain and embodiment... I can't mouse over. I wish I could. He's trying his hand. That was such a cool deck, man. That was, that was awesome. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Asian Eyes out.